First off, I want to thank and share responsibility for this with members of our steering committee, Abe Dye, Dave Coward, Phil Flood, and Dick Richards. These are concerned residents of our area who met and helped me work with Supervisor Todd House and his staff, and I want to thank his staff. Deborah Mulatto, she's at the front helping bring the group in. They've been very cooperative. Let me tell you the genesis, the beginning of this community meeting. I dare say it started some seven years ago when our neighbors to the east began planning their subdivision. But it recently came to the forefront when in conversations with Supervisor House, we began to talk about the need for safe access for residents of Gold Canyon. And it was during that conversation that the supervisor pointed out, well, there are some folks, Roberto, that feel that Sleepy Hollow will eventually be linked up to Peralta Canyon subdivision. And I said, well, let's have a meeting. And he readily agreed so that the community can hear firsthand from the Pinell County personnel who are responsible for having held hearings, made recommendations on the planning for Peralta Canyon subdivision. And their recommendations the Planning and Zoning Commission forwarded on to the Board of Supervisors. And it was the Board of Supervisors that is the only final authority. And what the supervisors, including our member on that board, approved was Peralta Canyon subdivision with two access routes. Listen carefully. Two access routes that have been officially adopted and are planned as the two access roads. Emma Parkway and Peralta Heights Road. Those are the two access routes. So let's clear the room of rumors, if you will, Sleepy Hollow may be somebody's idea of an access route, but the action by Pinal County and by our Board of Supervisors does not include Sleepy Hollow as an access route. But I think it's important. <laughs> process-oriented guy. I like to ask questions at public hearings. I like to encourage neighbors to go to public hearings. Sadly, folks, we need more representation when our county has public policies that are being decided, projects that are being proposed, so that you can have a voice Thankfully, we have a supervisor who listens. I don't always agree with the conversation's conclusions, but we have a member on that board who does listen. And so I encourage you, if you have questions, say them because at the end of this presentation, there will be an opportunity for the public to ask questions. In the meantime, hopefully, we will clarify for you the process involved, the decisions made, the data on which those decisions were based. And so with that introduction, let me 
asked Supervisor House to introduce himself and the members of the Pinal County personnel. Wow. Wow, what a group of people, huh? All it takes is a little controversy to get people to come out. <clears throat> Actually, it's not a little, it's a lot. Um, what we're facing here today and why I'd like to have this meeting here today is so you can hear firsthand from the authorities of Pinal County exactly what is currently planned and what will be planned or what has been brought before the county in the future or the uh, addition of Prop the King. First of all, I'd love to say that I'm very happy that everybody turned out. Uh, there's going to be people on one side or the other. I do not want this to be a divisive issue. I do not want it to be us versus them. My issue is to represent the entire district, District 5, everybody. So what we're trying to do is get today and figure out the facts as to exactly what's happening, put some rumors to rest because uh, they, they spread, have a tendency to spread around and we want to put those to rest and make sure everybody understands exactly what the process is and what's going on. And I do want you to get involved. If you feel adamant about one, of the, one side or the other, you need, to, you need to make your views expressed and you need to either get to me or get to my office or come to the Board of Supervisors meeting when it comes before the board. Because that's the best way to get your your information, your views across to us. So today we're just going to have a, a synopsis of what, what's happening right now and uh, what we're going to do going forward. And so everybody will have accurate information as to where we're at. And there, we, there is a proposal uh, to hook uh, Sleepy Hollow up to the back portion of Prolificating Stage Phase 2. Now, that's, that's a different phase than the first phase that's being built, and that is still a ways off, and we're going to find out exactly how far that is off. But, so this, this afternoon, I have a few people from Pinal County here. I'm going to say that on the very end is Hamachu Patel, and I'm going to get choked because I can't remember his name. Andy Smith just happened to be the, the, the running charge of our regional transit authority, and I keep forgetting his name. <laughs> Lindsey Randall. I know Chris Keller is the county attorney, Lewis Anderson with public work, and Charles Commanders with uh, emergency uh, management for Pinal County. So we have a lot of people that are going to give you a lot of information. There's going to be a lot of questions. That's great. I, I really want to hear the questions, and we're going to get the answers for you. Um, I don't know if we're going to get a presentation, the map up on the thing or not, but you're trying to get that arranged. But uh, we'll go ahead and have Hamachi Patel with planning and zoning, so he's the one that knows exactly where we're at right now. So uh, I'll have him come up and, and start the discussion. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Hamachi Patel. I'm director of community development. So uh, my department oversees uh, some of the entitlement process for land development. And so to walk you through the, what's currently uh, going on, if we can pull up some of the maps, uh, I'll come back to this map. If we can go to the zoomed area of uh, Peralta Canyon and Peralta Trails in Sleepy Hollow. Uh, Peralta Trails uh, is, let me give you a geographic perspective, uh, the blue large line, that's US 60, uh, the property that's uh, Peralta Trails Road is the orange color. Uh, certainly difficult, probably to, for you to read. The southern development is uh, Peralta Trails, and then the northern development is called Peralta Canyons. Phase one is the southern half of it. Phase two is the northern half. Um, and then just north of that is uh, Mesa del Or, uh, the road to Sleepy Hollow. Uh, so that uh, gives you a little bit of perspective. So Peralta Trails is Peralta Trails is built out, practically. Uh, Peralta Canyon Phase 1 has been approved. The zoning was approved back in 2006 and 7. Uh, and then it went through tentative plat, final plat, and uh, final plats were uh, recorded, and they started construction last year, a year and a half ago. So Phase 2 is the northern portion of Peralta Canyons. Uh, that project, uh, in 2006, when it went through zoning, uh, 
it has, oh, let me take a step back. Mesa del Oro, which is a subdivision to the north where many, some of you live. In 81, when those plats were created, there's this 60 foot right away, you can see going north south, uh, touching the uh, point uh, where uh, Peralta Canyon is. And then at the end of Sleepy Hollow, at the east end, you can see there's a right away there too. And currently, there, there's no development there. The, the roads don't currently exist there, but on paper, they do. Uh, the plat had those right of ways. So, back to Peralta Canyon. Uh, where that's at. So currently, tentative plats have been approved. Final plat uh, requires Board of Supervisors approval. The, those are, uh, have yet to be submitted. Uh, and uh, the Board will then consider those. The, at the time of the zoning of Peralta Canyons, that north-south connection point you see was identified as an emergency access with a crash gate on there. Uh, and so, one of the challenges we find with this area is it needs dual access points into major roadways and arterials. Peralta Trails is a, is a uh, principal arterial. Uh, Emily and um, uh, Emma, Emma. Peralta Heights are collector roads. So the important thing to understand is the classification of the roads. The connection point that's being shown, uh, touching into Mesa del Oro, is a local roadway classification. So, pretty narrow and uh, uh, very limited use in terms of uh, functionality. But right now, what's, what, where they're at right now, the tentative plans for uh, the Phase Two uh, have been approved, uh, and it's uh, currently going through improvement plans and civil engineering to go through. Uh, final planning, and then that will come before the Board of Supervisors. Does that answer the question? I know I went into a little bit of history, but I wanted to give you a perspective because as of today, yes, Mr. Ruel is correct, the two primary access points for Peralta Canyon is using the principal arterial, which is Peralta Road, uh, and using Emma as your parkway, as your primary access. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, the question is, what will be the process that the public can participate in in <coughs> proceeding to designate other access road? So, um, because most of the entitlements on this project has been approved through zoning, zoning is your primary area and where you have public output, input, and participation. So then it goes through planning process. So the only avenue left for this project is now final plan, which then can come before Board of Supervisors. It hasn't been identified the target uh, timeline on when that will come before the board, but that will be the only opportunity. Oh, no, I'm just explaining to you that the only other opportunity left now for this project will be to provide input at the final plat process. Any, any schedule on that? There's no schedule right now identified. As the schedule is developed by the submittal of the final plats, then we'll uh, keep yourself as, and others informed. And the burden is on all of us folks. This is not a Lone Ranger operation. All of us <laughs> need to be alert. And when that process begins, let's have this kind of turnout so that the people who are our employees recognize what their employers are desirous of accomplishing. Do I hear an amen to that? Amen. Thank you. In the right of sanctuary. Wait, as we said, they will be announcing, and when the public announcement is made, I'm not a Lone Ranger, but I did a pretty good job of getting in touch with those who can spread the word. We will spread the word, but it's up to each of you to spread the word to your neighbors as well. Now, is the developer 
Here. Very good. Uh, sir, do you have any uh, plans that you want to announce to the community that affect? No? Okay. Very good. But again, you know, developers are the ones who develop our homes also, also folks. We all depend on developers. And so developers will respond to the market. And the market here is amplified by the beautiful environment that we share. And we need to find ways of managing how we share that environment with others who are attracted here for the same reasons that we all came here. So at this stage then, I'd like to open the mic to the public. I think there's been a very clear explanation of the process. Yes. Very good. Can I also add a, a, some important factor? When this was going through the rezoning process, it was extremely important to create some uh, tra uh, transition between how Mesa del Oro has developed versus the urbanization of what was presented, you know, the, the master plan communities. And so the northern lots, uh, if you could uh, look at the, the, the northernmost lots of Peralta Canyons are, are specifically was uh, identified to make sure they're acre lots and have an eight foot equestrian easement between Mesa del Oro and Peralta Canyon. Uh, to allow further buffering between a, a very uh, um, urban environment and a little bit more larger lot type of environment. So uh, as the planning occurred, those lots on the northern part would be large acre lots. Very good. We've heard, I think, a very clear explanation of the planning process, the approval schedule, that will be announced when there is need for the board to approve final plats. So in the meantime, if there are any unanswered questions that are focused on the issue that brought us here, the access roads, we've made arrangements to have a floor microphone here for anybody to ask questions related to that topic, the access roads. You sure may. And there's another gentleman that raises his hand first, and then the second here. That gentleman, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Reverend Mayor. Can you give your, your name and your street? Grace Kennings, Sleepy Hollow. My backyard looks out onto Sleepy Hollow. It's a neighborhood street. It's not an artery. It's not a main intersection. I'm a very busy professional. I took time out of my job today because greed, avarice, and mostly <laughs> ineptitude brought me here. I will fight to maintain that my neighborhood remain a neighborhood. Sleepy Hollow does not have the width, the breadth, the diameter of a Peralta Trail, look at it. It's a neighborhood street, and you want to turn it into a main intersection because you decided on 700 plus homes and your greediness, but mostly your ineptitude, has me here today fighting against you because you're turning my street into a main intersection. It won't happen. May okay. okay. I clarify, the statement was you. Oh, I... Okay, and please, these are our yes. public employees and public servants, folks, over here. So address, address, yeah. So address your uh, questions, and I prefer questions rather than rhetorical statements by anybody. Go ahead. Well, I, okay. Yeah, if, if, I, if we can uh, get a chance to uh, show you another illustration uh, that could at least provide some perspective of, um, a road, or at least that connector road that is uh, identified there. Could, could we see the other image uh, that has a cross section? Uh, 
These are, this, uh, we have multiple classifications based on, on the, the ADT, average daily traffic. Like US 60, we would identify as either a freeway or a parkway or a principal arterial. There's some 20, 30,000 vehicles a day driving back and forth on US 60. And then they go down from there as to the size and, and the, what we call the types of streets from, from principals to minors to majors, et cetera, et cetera. And so this particular one we're looking at is a, is a the local street, and it would be 32 feet long, or wide, excuse me, and it would, in essence, would have no curb gutter, it wouldn't have striping, it, it wouldn't have any of the, the amenities, if you will, like a sidewalk and that kind of thing that you're talking about as far as a, a principal street or, or a minor arterial type of street. So I just wanted to kind of give you a, an idea of what this facility would look like that's connecting these two communities. Lisa Carey, Sleepy Hollow resident. Sir, I know you mentioned the artery linking uh, Sleepy Hollow to Mesa Del Oro, um, and you said that they were, you know, acre lots plus to somehow represent what we enjoy out there currently. That's all fine, but it doesn't take away from the thousands of cars that's going to be driving past my front door. There's no wall. Our our driveways lead out on Sleepy Hollow. Our garbage cans are there. Our dogs are right there. And now we're going to have thousands of cars going by our front door. I don't think that the development would ever have sold their homes and gotten the people in there if those residents knew that thousands of cars would be by their front garage or front door. That's what is going to happen to us on Sleepy Hollow. My name is Robert Abelson, and I live in uh, Peralta Trails, uh, Prospect. Uh, I, I uh, wrote to you two years ago, actually on March 13th, 2017, and part of what I wrote, well, the soon to be constructed, commenced construction of a new subdivision off of Peralta Road, with the addition of 761 new homes, the affirmation of the future of, uh, of uh, uh, Peralta Public School, and the proposed development of regional park at Peralta Road brings the necessity of planning for a secondary uh, access egress uh, uh, road to this area. Uh, so far, I haven't heard anything about the safety factor uh, that goes on. Now, I have a great deal of uh, compassion for the people on Sleepy Hollow. I mean, didn't buy there to have a, a major artery go through, and I can, I can accept that very, very uh, well. However, uh, there is a necessity for a secondary road into this particular area. We're going to have 700, going to be 761 homes when, when Peralta Canyon is completed. There's 832 homes presently in, in uh, Peralta Trails. There's a public school there. The only access to this area is via Highway 60, which is not sufficient. There was just recently a situation uh, where, which I witnessed, and maybe not the one that you're thinking of, but the one I saw with this was last Tuesday when there was an open thing at the festival. And I saw a car, uh, an ambulance trying to go uh, westbound on the 60, and I was turning, coming eastbound on, on the 60, turning into Peralta Road, and he couldn't get down the road because of the traffic on, on the 60. He couldn't get to wherever he was going on the 60. So his, his, uh, his, lights were, his lights were going, his siren was going. I think we got, got that question. Well, the, the question is, we need a, not a question, it's a statement. We need a secondary access or egress. Uh, if it's not through Sleepy Hollow, and maybe that's not the best way, where else could it come? And this is the question I asked you two years ago. Your office told me they were going to get, uh, you'd be in touch with me. I haven't heard from you yet, <laughs> so I'm happy to hear from you today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Lewis Anderson, Public Works Director. To that question, the 
the request was to have a secondary access, and that's one of the things that brought us here today, is to have that secondary access. Our development code actually calls out two access points for safety for every subdivision. It's in our development code. So that's part of it. As Himachi had indicated, this was approved as a crash gate, and there was no access. However, with the additional development, and this isn't the last development to come to this area, with that additional development, that's where this came in. We had other individuals come to us and ask us, where's the secondary access on this particular item? So we're trying to identify what is the best location for a secondary access, and this is where the, the right-of-way was already identified. However, as Hamachu pointed out, this is currently approved as a crash gate. It's not a open intersection at this point, and it is just approved as an emergency crash gate. So I hope that helps in some of the questioning that are coming forward. Oh, I had one other item as to the traffic on the 60. The ADOT board member that represents us here, Steve Stratton was down. He came to the meeting. However, he had a family emergency. He apologized. He said he doesn't want to interfere with anything the county is doing, and his main priority is the 60 freeway. The, um, he heard you loud and clear. He wanted to let you know that he is going to extend that turn lane going east so that cars won't back up trying to turn left onto South King Ranch Road. Thank you. Your question? I live in the Sierra Vista subdivision. My backyard is, my name is Ann Seegers, and my backyard is on Sleepy Hollow. And I think the people before me have really said it for me. But I'd like to know if there has to be another exit out of Peralta, why can't you put another road in Peralta directly onto Sleepy Hollow? <laughs> That's a good question, and that was part of the discussion we've had with the development community as well as... Uh, well, give me a good answer. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. We're working on that. The area that we have the right-of-way, where we have actually right-of-way dedicated to the public, is that connection on the Sleepy Hollow. No. Yeah. How do we get another right-of-way? No. How do we get another right-of-way? The, the, the developer can actually petition the Arizona Department of Transportation. Well, is access. the developer here? Yeah. Any facility, any way that somebody wanted to access US 60 from the end of the concrete over here, around almost 200, all the way to Florence Junction, they can get access anywhere they want by just asking ADOT. If it, they got so I guess the developer that's here can ask ADOT. He can't, but he still, we still have okay. to. Okay, make have, it happen. We're we still, all here. We still have to provide two access points to the development for emergency services as well as bus, schools, and that types of activities as well. So we have to work together on this. Thank you very much. Next question. Morris the Hills. I live off of Sleepy Hollow. I'd like to know if any of you care to share with us what the anticipated traffic flow is through there after you guys decide that there's not going to be a crash gate. We know that's bells and whistles. Pretty obvious. So, so none of you have done any kind of investigation on what the increasing traffic flow from Peralta Canyon and Peralta Trails will be coming into Sleepy Hollow there? Sure. So I is there a way to zoom in up there? No problem. Um, part? Okay. So I think the important thing is like they talked about the road classification. This road that's entering into Sleepy Hollow isn't an arterial road, it's a local street road. So if you look at this traffic that's coming, that we're building into Peralta, there are these larger roads, they're taking them down to Peralta. So all this traffic isn't gonna be coming up north. So you said the people on the north side of Peralta Canyon aren't gonna cut through to get to King's Ranch Road? Or you being <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying 
does. Yes, there is. this is a large development. So do you have a number? I, I don't know. Another group I don't investigating know. anything yeah. or anticipated that. We, we 16, only project 1,600 homes with maybe 2,500 cars. Minimal. Yeah, we don't have that information. Okay, but, but let's remind ourselves that a traffic impact analysis is required. A TIA will be required as it is for all development. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to hold the mic rather than raise the mic stand. My name is Lou Hansen. I uh, live on uh, 6626 South Foothills Drive, which is Soho off of Sleepy Hollow, then up the hill on Foothills Drive. I have a question and I have some comments that I just want to present. Yeah, please. Be, please, more, please, be please. more specific on the crash gate. Does it have a chain and a padlock on it? You don't know. So, so you don't know if it's going to be used a lot, a little, or only by EMTs and fire department. You don't know. Okay, wait, wait, wait. You, you've answered that question. You don't know. The rest of my comments, you're the developer right here? Yeah. Okay. This is all constructive. It's all constructive. Sleepy Hollow is not designed for through traffic. There's no turn lanes on the King's Ranch Road. There's no stop signs or traffic control for left-hand turns on the King's Ranch Road. It's a 25 mile per hour speed zone. There are 68 private driveways along. And I'll jump ahead, there's zero driveways on Peralta Trail. Several street intersections, two of which are blind intersections. And I brought pictures, I'll be happy to show them to you. No sidewalks other than a one-tenth mile section. No raised curbs to protect pedestrians walking along the street. There's one section where it's steep and rocky. You have to walk on the street. Currently, there are five AJUSD bus stops on Sleepy Hollow in the morning, and there's five more in the afternoon. Next, I'm going to jump to Peralta Trail. Sir, We're off the trail. Would, would you please kind of catch the line? Let me go. Let me go. Then you can ask questions. Would you We're off the trail. is four lanes versus two on Sleepy Hollow. It's a 35 mile per hour zone instead of 25. It has turn lanes. It has curbs. It has a sidewalk. There's no private driveways, and it has no blind intersections. That's the end. I'll take any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Safety. 
Uh, I don't know if any of the people on Sleepy Hollow are aware, but there was an accident at Peralta Trails and US 60 that isolated the entire Peralta Trails community for a long period of time. Yeah. Isolated them. There was no way out for them. There was no way out for them. There's no other way to get out for them, and they were stuck. We have numerous issues in District 5 with areas of development where there's only one way in and one way out. And that's not necessarily bad planning. It is. It is. <laughs> well, uh, there's an easement to Sleepy Hollow for a reason. But if it was designed, there's an easement there for a reason. Why would you put an easement if it wasn't there for a reason? The reason was the murder that we had. Yes, uh, and we, and were, we were told at the last zoning meeting a few years ago that that would remain what it was for. Yes, absolutely. Access. Right. Access. Right. You mean to tell me, okay, what we're talking about here is a road that's equivalent to Sleepy Hollow in size, no sidewalks. It's going to be an artillery road off the top end of Peralta King. And the gentleman before me made a perfectly good case. They can just go out the front door and now cross the trail and go out to US 60 because that's the way they're normally going to go. Not 1800, huh? They're, not, they're going to go that way normally. They do it now. Can I say something, please? Everybody needs respectful and just let this go so everybody can answer questions and take time so everybody else can speak. Okay. So, so it's a safety issue. Yeah, this, how this came out is a safety issue for the value of the lives of the people who live in Fall the Trail. I think, I think I think the problem is maybe I'll hold the mic too tight. I think the problem is here that I would hate to think that somebody would perish and fall the trail because we could not get another access through some other way to Sweepy Hollow. Right now, the only other access route would have to go across state truck land, and it would, it would take a long. Everybody here is very familiar with the state truck land process. Well, how long it would take to get that? We can start working on that. But quite honestly, that's going to take a while, and that is that is part of the plan for Peralta Trail to have another exit out to 60. That's correct. But that's going to happen. So right now we have Peralta Canyon that we're dealing with. We have the lives of the people on Peralta Trail that need to have an emergency secondary route out. People are not going to drive north to go south. They're not going to do it. So, so I'm just trying to tell you that that we have to remember that this is why this is all, I'm having an interesting conversation. I'm listening to everybody and all their points of view, I will. But the point is, if you get if you get loud and you get boisterous, you know, it's just not gonna help your cause at all. So let's just keep it tempered, let's keep it quiet. Cheap, cheap. It, crowd noise does not work. If you interview any of the Board of Supervisors, any of them, Neither just blaming us. Any of them. No one's blaming anyone at this point in time. I'm saying that we need to try and calculate and develop a plan. Okay? There was a, there was a road there. Before, before you get on the developer, before you go after the developer, listen to that. I'm the one that wanted to try and talk about Sleepy Hollow, and that's why we're having this meeting. You know, so we're having a meeting, we're going we're to have the conversation, we're going to have the conversation, and then we, we, we're going to come before the Board of Supervisors, it may or may not have the connection to Sticky Hollow. That's why we're having this meeting. Yeah, to, to talk constructively and to have a conversation. So let's get back to the question. No man, not a done deal. No man. Can I no man did not a done deal. No man, it's not a done deal. So we're going to have Sleepy Hollow because there was an accident on New Brunswick, Peralta, and the sheriff took off for an hour to remove it? Well, we'd be the sheriff for DPS, and yeah. Well, would you would you not want somebody to have a different place? What about Sleepy Hollow in case there was a catastrophe in Sleepy Hollow another way out? So anyway, so let's, let's have some more, let's have the question. I'm just asking everybody, because I know it would be a little excited, let's just have everybody keep it on a regular vote and tone. Because as soon as you start escalating, it's just not going to be constructive for anybody. 
It just won't. And we were told, oh, we're asking, let's get back to the questions and, and let's try and keep it going. Let's return to the questions, please. And my there's a lot of people, Nando. so if you could keep it brief. Thanks. You bet. My name is Yanna Batten. I'm an outsider. I'm from Superior. I think it's a real shame that Superior hasn't been included in this discussion. I almost died at the end of February, waiting an hour and a half through the Renfest. What I see with Peralta is another iron work. One way in, one way out. And I see the traffic jams, the collisions that are going to happen. You only have to get behind one or two sand trucks at the first stoplight and be held up for hours. This is ridiculous. There's got to be better planning than this. I mean, I cannot believe the six people that are here That's currently the plan. 
There's no funding available right now. The state transportation board, it's, it's a, a, strict, a state transportation board issue, but we are working through that and hopefully soon we'll be through the PRTA and get some money to start these projects. Uh, there's a gentleman here that has a question. Is this my car? Or this the mic is on. Can you hear me now? Thank you. Sorry. Uh, my name is Gary Parsons, and I live at uh, Pleasant Place on the corner, near the corner of Lazy Lane, and directly uh, about two blocks from, uh, from the Peralta Trail border there, and the end of Lazy Lane and Sleepy Hollow. And, uh, you know, we've had issues and all this kind of stuff. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a developer, so. Retired developers. <laughs> Thank God. I used to come to these meetings to be up on the, on the podium down. Uh, anyway, um, we, had, we had a situation in, in the neighborhood in, in, regard, in regard to uh, to Peralta Trail where they were, where they dig, they got the streets to, to uh, and they went through our house and down the place of land. Sorry, uh, they dug up the streets to put the water line in to brawl the trail, which I, I guess it was a long time planning, but why they, they did this that late, I have no idea. It, it just recently. But whoever is in charge of the highway department there, I don't think they took a look at what was going on because the, the, uh, the streets were torn up to do the water line. And they had water trucks there to dissipate dust, I guess. And they're heavy, and they came through and they broke all the pavement up. So, you know, uh, and, and, and the developer, whoever's, whoever's getting in charge, needed water out there to crawl the trail. Can you hear it? Probably put all the canyon in it, whatever it is. Uh, and, and uh, every time I've done planting, I got a subdivision. I need two access roads. We plant it in the subdivision, but we're building it. So, you know, that, that, that just, you know, I don't know how the heck you do it unless you uh, redid our subdivision in Mesa Del Mar and you widen the streets or whatever. But until the streets, and they, by the way, I don't know when they're going to fix the streets in Mesa Del Oro, but it really needs to be done. And also, Highway 60, good God, it's got potholes all the way through uh, to the uh, boxes. And uh, somebody should be in conjunction with all this doing, uh, doing something about the roads and uh, something. Thank you. Next question. Thank you. My name is Kurt Longer, and I live a few blocks off the CP Hollow in Gold Canyon. Uh, just from what I'm witnessing, and I could be wrong, but it doesn't look like the right hand knows what the left one is doing. Here. Uh, I've heard a lot of testimony from a lot of our good citizens about tree planting. Well, it doesn't look like much has been done. I was in emergency services for four decades as a state trooper. And I gotta be honest, uh, there's ways to access accidents without such a major long tie-up, DPS, Canal County Sheriff, whatever. And listening to Supervisor House, who I had a conversation with at Adobe about a week or so ago, I asked him point blank, if Sleepy Hollow is going to be open to traffic to Corella, he said, absolutely. Absolutely it was. So, you know, I'm hearing 
It might be, it's not going to be, we don't know. I think you all better get together and create a better plan. It should have been done back in 2006. Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Mary Wilkins. I exit and enter uh, my home uh, via Sleepy Hollow. I've lived in this area 17 wonderful, pleasant, quiet years, and I enjoy the small town environment. Opening up Sleepy Hollow will cause more noise, more traffic, and accidents. I believe that it would be a better idea if you opened a road connecting the Peralta Canyon with the Peralta Trail and Entrada, a side road or a bypass, and just leave Sleepy Hollow alone. We like it the way it is. Leave it alone. And P.S. Mr. House, I did try to call you, and I tried emailing you, and I cannot get through because I was calling regarding your 60 East and West potholes are unbelievable, and it really burns the bottom of my heart and tired. So, if you could tell us at the end of the meeting, you're to advise you not that US 60 needs to be repaved. That's not a county road. If it was, we would have repaved it by now, but it's not. So you, that argument happened at the state level. So let's not connect US 60 to this because that's a completely different government entity that handles US 60, unfortunately. So ADOT's the person, so your representative, your state and, and senators are the people to contact for the US 60. Let me uh, intervene here. And thankfully, on my way here, the last few days also, I've seen witness that our county has responsibly been on its maintenance schedule. So thank you for repaving the streets that are being repaved right now. because that's where the development's going to go. My second uh, comment is, has anybody done or thought about all of the hikers, which falls in line with the other lady that spoke about the busyness? Because you know the hikers, and it's a very busy trail on Peralta Trail, they'll be cutting through the neighborhood too. How will your new home owners feel about that? My second, my third, is there is a turn off of 60 before you get to Peralta Trail, and it, it's a turnaround. And that also goes into that private home area that's going to be developed. So I'm just trying to think and put together why a road off of 60 would not be developed there that's going to go directly into the housing. One more, two more. Uh, oh, it's not my connection here. Um, so another thing is I'm not sure if anyone has been there. I know we all have coming off of coming off of the King's Ranch Road, and it is true, and I know they're working on developing making more turn lane, but the backup. So when you make your turn down to the hollow, it's endless traffic for about two hours in that busy time. So if you develop that area to go in there, that's going to increase that. And also, um, when you look at something like this, I agree, we need to look at the height of, of our winter visitors, and school, and hiking. And I'm really not hearing that taking place. Thank you. I guess I could answer one of the questions of the three. The question regarding the access to the 60 freeway would have to be on state lands. The state land department owns all the frontage that's not private there. 
So to get an additional access, it would have to be sold to a developer. A developer needs to go through that process to improve that infrastructure. That's not something the county does. We can't trespass on state land, but that is the, that is the situation. The private land is what's being developed. The state land is all around here, and it's hard to circumnavigate. We can't just build roads. We do have roads that are illegal currently on state land, but that's another matter. trails on uh, the far uh, west corner, just close to 60. Anyway, I called uh, the engineering department or something of the county because I started seeing flags go up and improvements being made out in that uh, rough, supposed to be state land. Um, and there's power line there, and there's water lines there, and all kinds of things were happening there to access the new uh, developed area. So I want to know what's happening there. Is that being uh, scoped out as another access? Because it certainly looks to me like there's been uh, people uh, surveying and there's little red flags out there, and there's uh, the utility trucks coming and going down that road. And like I said, I did call the engineering, and they said they didn't have, uh, that it wasn't on their maps or something. So I'm a little concerned about that because that's my backyard, and I like to, <laughs> I like that. So uh, let me uh, make sure I understand where you're at. Uh, you're in front of the trails on the far western side, close to US 60, right? Yes. So you see that uh, land north of 60, that's the, the vacant land that's all raw desert, that's state trust land. Okay. Uh, the, the, that's, that's where the access is, and that's where the power lines are, and that's where the water's gone, and the sewer, I suppose. Yeah, so it's likely what's happening is construction work. What she's talking about is the sewer line access, the building lines to go through. Easements and uh, for utilities. Correct. Yeah, so um, to get to your question, uh, it, do, you do we anticipate that that construction activity is going to create a, a new access for yes, uh, onto 60? The answer is no. It's a utility easement for purposes of water sewer. But I, I would like to point out, uh, if you look at Pearl Canyon, there's a road uh, that de dead ends at the western boundary of their property. You see in the blue, uh, and it's the name is uh, Chevrel or Chevron? Chevron. Chevron. Uh, that road is intended to connect into whatever gets planned out for state trust land, and then have access into US 60. So, uh, back to... So uh, it is going to be put through... No, no, no. no, not where you're, not where you are residing, where you're seeing construction. Uh, so right now you're just seeing activities occurring along utility easement. So there's no road currently planned for another access point on the US 60. Well, there are people with Jeeps that are doing it. <laughs> They're probably trespassing. Colette Critchfield, I live on Savannah, which is one street over from Sleepy Hollow Trail. It's remember it's a trail, not a road. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I've been here for two years. My husband is a general contractor at 40, and we have traveled across the United States building for some of the largest developers in the United States, and we have watched 10 towns be in this exact position, and we have watched the uh, degradation of the people in charge of their lives and the developers uh, going ahead and not considering the small people. With that being said, my question is to the developer, uh, are you planning on petitioning ADOT to go ahead and have another road since they said you would have to do it? And I would like an answer 
so would everybody else. No, the developer, you said the developer had to petition excuse, excuse ADOT. What, what I said, the developer could go to ADOT and petition for access. As, as Mr. Patel was just explaining where the state trust land is, that's a whole other development, and so that that developer would actually have to go to state to the Arizona Department of Transportation and get an access to the C to the US 60. So this developer wouldn't he's already got his at the Trail. Yeah, he's got it already. And that's, and that's where his is at. The other question that I have is there is an environmental study that was done. I read all 37 pages. <laughs> and I want to know where the watershed, I want to know where the um, protected animals, uh, places are. I want to know how you plan on having all these developments without any uh, health uh, positioning, such as fire trucks, hospitals, medical, dental. Bow County cannot support this. Where are those plans? Because this is not a Bow County problem. This is a developer's problem and you people that decided that we're going to stop it. I have news for the people on Sleepy Hollow. It will become nothing but a tenant-occupied street. I watched it in Mesa. I watched it in Scottsdale. People are not going to be able to sell because it is a thoroughfare. People are not are going to experience their animals, children, deaths. I've seen that. Therefore, they're going to not be able to sell their houses. They're going to have to rent them, and it will become high crime, etc. Number four is, the question is, do they realize it? Listen to me. I'm very clear. of Pinnell County. So that is all developable land. There's going to be approximately 800,000 people that will be living south of US 60 towards Florence. So envision that while you're thinking about all this transportation that we're just talking about right here. These people are going to have to move someplace. They're going to have to go somewhere. We're trying to bring in economic development. We're talking about all kinds of activities to bring in all kinds of robust things. We have hospitals now. We are, we're working on those things. So we have the US 60 that was, if you've lived here since 2000 and... Okay, well US 60 didn't have traffic signals on it in 2000. It is now, has a traffic signal every mile. Peralta Trail will probably eventually have a traffic signal. We have, actually there's a study that was done, there was a study done... There's one minute! <laughs> Excuse me. I was thinking of the, the Camino video. Sorry. That being said, US 60 had to begin a study back in 2012 with a reroute. You may remember that particular study, those of you who have lived here. ADOT doesn't have any funding for that. So we have all kinds of transportation plans. We have a problem with getting enough revenue to do the transportation improvements that we need to do. It's pure and simple. And so we work with our developers trying to, to get these access points. We work with our developers so that they can build their sections of the half streets or the full streets, but there's a limit to what we can do because we are only just a county government. We don't have the incorporation of city governments or states. You've already asked this. Ma'am, please, let's keep order. Let's keep order so that everybody can have a fair chance. Did you have anything else? Since, since they have the existing easements coming off of Fossil Springs Road, 
which talks about large trucks, fire trucks, ambulances, you know, etc. Why can't you take Fossil Springs Road and or Pivot Peak and move it out to 60, put a stoplight, traffic light in, and back in the road instead of uh, having these people be so inconvenienced and the history as I've already explained it to you? And why wasn't the developer held accountable to that? <laughs>
if I stay, we refer to this as the NIMBY behavior, not in my backyard. Okay. <coughs> I think that most of us who live here moved out here because of the fact we love the beauty of the land and, you know, accessibility to cities, but far enough removed from cities, but we value our emergency personnel. We value our emergency personnel. I think, Mr. House, you've recently gotten yourself elected to the uh, Superstition Mountain uh, consideration, uh, I don't know the exact name, but something in addition to your role as a county supervisor. I value emergency personnel. I'm going to quote somebody uh, who last year said, Drivers on State Road 88 would, would have an alternate route in case State Road 88 was blocked. Then you go to the state. It never hurts to have another way around. Do you remember that quote, Mr. House? Okay. That quote was directly taken from Mr. House at the Apache Junction and Golden Canyon newsletter in relation to the flooding that occurred in Apache Junction last summer and the fact that emergency personnel could not get could not get through because there was only one way. I'm looking at Peralta Road, that I guess you can call it a north-south road. There's, I'm mean, part of the terminology, arterial roads that go off of it, and there are two new ones that go into Peralta Canyon. Well, then they dead end. So the question I have, because two weeks ago, on March 4th, 19, uh, 2019, there was a fatal car crash down here where somebody rear-ended a, a semi and traffic was backed up for a significant amount of time. The question I would have is, if that was a hazmat rollover, which would require six to eight hours of cleanup, how would anybody get out safely, maybe it's during school when the 500 children are in school, so I think we have to look at it from a public safety perspective. Not neighborhood against neighborhood, but considering the fact that there are 832 homes in Peralta Trails, the current plot plan is approved by the county for Peralta Canyon, is 710 homes, and there are over 500 children that go to elementary school. I don't know if there's any parents here of the kids who attend Peralta Elementary School, but I need to have to be in a position to explain to a parent that your kid is locked in school and I can't get them home if there's a fire coming from the mountainside and the traffic, there's a traffic accident at 60 and Peralt Road. So I just wanted to react to this is that quoting you is there better be more than one way. And so as according to the, pl the plan that I've seen, what was given to us is what they said that there were two access roads. Is that correct? There were two. The handout that I received them as I walked in said that there were two access roads. Yes? I, I think the, it says the yellow exist, line. Existing easement, dotted line. Existing fire road easement, dotted line. And they both lead to Sleepy Hollow Trail. Does that mean, is that a paved or unpaved? It's, it's currently undeveloped. But it's there as a, because I believe the plat plan that's approved by the county says that the developer is supposed to have two emergency roads out. That's what I read. That's true. So the, if you look at this map on the screen, uh, that's what the discussion is, is going on today. Is should that blue line connect into the current right of way that is, that uh, intersects that sleepy hollow? Okay, that's one, that's one road, right. but on here, it says that there are two. Where's the other one going to go? The other easement is to the eastern part, but it does not identify any access. Doesn't it? So it's an access point. So the question then is, is it emergency entrance and egress, or is it a road that is only to be used by emergency personnel? So... It's currently identified on Peralta Canyon. It's currently identified as just an emergency access. Who? So, if so I, through if the I, planning process, you can change the designation to a right of way. Okay, so if I need to get into my house because of a health emergency and I can't come down 60, 
I'm, I'm legally allowed to use that as emergency access? So today you are not because the northern part of phase right. two of Peralta Canyon has not been final planted yet. Correct, I know that. Yeah. So, okay. what, it, so that once, or whatever gets approved, uh, then that will establish the legal access. Okay. And I think, you know, I, as we say, I, I just don't want neighborhoods against neighborhoods. I think people need to consider public safety, the health and well-being, especially for the children that go to school. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Yes. Let me uh, make a comment. Uh, the yellow sheet was not produced by the Pinal County people. Your steering committee, of which I'm a part, were responsible for putting this together. And the two access roads that are shown on the map are Not M.A. Park, but it's no such animal. Yeah, uh, and the Sleepy Hollow. Mm -hmm. The you know, Emma Park Way and the Peralta Heights Road. The Peralta Heights Road and the Emma Park Way. So those are access roads right now from Peralta Canyon. And let me un uh, underscore that when we first started planning this community meeting, we planned this meeting and invited our neighbors, Peralta Canyon, because we feel that all residents of our region deserve a safe way into their residential area and out of their residential area. So that there's no division between Peralta Canyon and the rest of Mesa del Moro and uh, the rest of Gold Canyon. Thank you. My name is Jerry Walker. And I live on uh, uh, Crimson Sky Place, I uh, can see my backyard from here if I were outside, the other side of Kings Ranch Road. Uh, I really appreciate all of the wonderful people that are up here on the stage today. You're all hardworking people, and I'm glad you're here. But there has been zero planning for infrastructure that should have taken place before any development was ever allowed to take place. Zero, zero planning for infrastructure. I've heard people say, well, that's state trust land, or that's U.S. highway, that's State Department of Transportation responsibility. No, it's not. It's all of our responsibility, and we elect you and pay your salaries through our tax dollars to come to conclusions before we ever allow congestion like this to occur. Mm -hmm. That's your job, not ours. You should not tell us to go to the Department of Transportation or any, any other public entity. That's your job. You go to the Department of Transportation. You go to the U.S. Department of Transportation. You before you ever allowed to be constructed. I would if I were you. Give me a chance, I'll do it. Thank you. Brad Daniels, I've lived out on Sleepy Hollow since 1998. I'm just curious on one thing. When I have not seen any of the streets have any work done on them for years, all of a sudden, they're wanting to open this up. How long are these new resurfacing jobs planned ahead of time? Or is this just the bait you're throwing us out to, oh, look, we've done this for your street. Now we're going to go down Sleepy Hollow. How long has that been planned? I mean, was it a year ago? Anybody? Did this just come up now that we decided to use Sleepy Hollow? No, so we have a pavement preservation group that goes around the county and they do the pavement preservation on the roads and there is a five-year plan on our website and the Skull Canyon area is listed in the 2018-2019 fiscal year. And it was, so you decided a year ago to do it at this time? 
Lewis Anderson, um, Public Works. The actual uh, answer is four years ago. So it would have been five years ago in that planning process. It gets on our transportation improvement plan, our TIP. And so it was five or so years ago. We have the money. We securitize the budget for that in the future. It just happened that it happened just before this. The other thing, there's enough people here to remember if they do jam this, which it sounds like they're going to do down our throat, there are elections coming up one of these years, and remember what they treated us here. You can make your vote count. Let me again comment. And I comment as one who darkens the doorway of the Board of Supervisors at every meeting. <laughs> and I'm sure they are wondering what does Roberto have up his sleeve today. But let me address that last question. I started looking into this about three years ago. And yes, it was on the five-year plan. And yes, it is on schedule. So I think fair is fair. I compliment the county for adhering to its five-year plan. And it happens because I have been keeping abreast of it that we were on schedule. And that's why I commented earlier that I was pleased to see that they are on schedule in the resurfacing. Next question. Jim Reynolds, my wife Callie and I are here. Uh, we live on Pater Drive, but we're here in support of all our neighbors. Were any of you staff members here in 2006? One. Well, thank you for your service. I was in uh, public service 40 years, public works. 30 as a director. Uh, it seems to me that the county dropped the ball back in 2006. I have some experience down in Santan Valley. It's my view that it was a very rural county. And the folks in power at the time saw dollar signs for impact fees. Didn't give a thought to rebuilding hot highways, pothole filled two lane road without curbs and gutters, adequate drainage, and they didn't put that on the backs of the developers. They just got, got the impact fees and had to come back and reconstruct at much greater cost many years later. And I think that's what we've got here. The plan as I see it doesn't remotely contemplate somebody um, getting that state trust plan and putting an access road out that way. It looks to me like it only contemplates going north up to Sleepy Hollow. And I would hope, Mr. House, that you could encourage your fellow. I came from a very progressive community in Illinois, Northbrook, Illinois, and we wouldn't have begun to uh, approve a, a subdivision without two ladies in the house. We would have hope someday there's going to be further construction that would alleviate a problem. They wouldn't have done that. They would have required the developer or developers to fund that as part of their investment in infrastructure. It's common throughout the country, and I don't know why it's such a problem here. And I know it's been laid in your lap, and you're trying to do the best you can to work out some reasonable solutions. Not an easy road, uh, a road to hope, that's for sure. I wish you well. But this is not a good plan the way that plan looks to me right now. Thank you very much. would carry as much, if not more, than the residents who live out there. So I would encourage you to work with the state because it is a safety issue for the people in Peralta Canyon who only have one access to US 60. When we were looking for a home to purchase, we rejected Peralta Canyon for that very reason, because there was only one way in and out. So that being said, I have a couple of questions. One, for the fire and safety people, are there plans for additional fire and rescue operations with the addition of these 800 houses? That would be a question for the fire chief. Okay. 
I'm not going to put, put the fire chief on a, on a spot. Uh, I'm on the board of directors of the fire district. We did have that conversation at the and, last board meeting and, that we need to look at uh, repositioning and, and planning for the future of SFMD to have a, a station that can handle Peralta Trails and, and Trader Joe. Because right now that would happen with the amount of houses that are, are planned to be built, yeah. the one fire station that we do have here. Yeah. We we understand that there's going to be a need for that, and that's something that's going to be have to plan for. Uh, and when would that information be available to the public? Because I, if I was a future homeowner, I would want to know if there was adequate fire rescue. I, I, I don't know if he wants to come up here and brag, but he just got a really prestigious thing today. So, Chief, you want to come up? My, Mike Farber is the Chief of the Superstition Fire Medical District. I live out here too, so I, I do understand the concerns. We just got an ISO rating of a two, which puts us in the top two percent of the nation. Our uh, cardiac arrest survivability is probably, I think, we're four times the national average. So we do look at that. And one of the things I do is I've been working with the MPA to develop a map so I can tell based on where our calls are. One of the issues we built Station Five, so we have two out here, and that's in the back part on Don Donnelly. One of the things we noticed was our response time wasn't getting much better than some of that area. One of the things we determined was the gate. It should have been electric. It was locked. So rather than drive all the way around, we ended up um, getting that changed. So we do look at all the data. And we are looking at that. Right now, we don't need another station based on the amount of call load the two stations run. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, we are looking at that. We're looking at the entire development. And we do plan out for uh, 15, 20 years. Of course, it changes, but um, to answer your question specifically, yes, we are discussing that. In fact, we're also looking at whether we go to bond, or one of the things we talked about was having developers pay for lots like typically people do for fire stations, or future fire stations, too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If it should come to pass that Sleepy Hollow is determined to be the best access for a, a second access out of Rock no, Trail, no. has there been any study done to the impact of that road? As it's been mentioned, it's a it's a it's a blacktop road. It's not a street. It's not, all the things that were mentioned earlier are not there. So, my I have two questions. Has that been addressed as to the upgrades that would be needed for that road, and who the hell is going to pay for it? Does the developer pay for it, or do we as taxpayers pay for it? Thank you. So that would be something that would be addressed in the TIA portfolio. I'm sorry, the traffic impact analysis that they'll have to do for the development. My name is Tracy Metkin. I'm actually from Mountain Brook. I wasn't aware this was all about Sleepy Hollow. I thought it was generally about this area. Problem, or that's the developer's problem. 
because what we got is about five or six different people working together or involved in this, and they're not working together is what I'm hearing. So let's get a working group together, figure out what needs to be done, start taking action, and put in an emergency funding request to the state or the developer or what, you know, whatever is the right way to do it. But we, we got to quit pointing fingers and get everybody involved together and then make it happen because we got medical emergencies now. We, have, we heard from somebody almost died. Now, this can't be a five or ten year plan. We have to figure out how to do it quickly, and I think the county is the right ones to be the facilitator and the organizer of the work. Thank you. Thank you. On that question in particular, our current, our county manager, Greg Stanley, has uh, adopted a policy for our directors to make sure that we are in coordination with ADOT, Arizona State Land Department, we've got Pima County, Maricopa County, and we do quarterly meetings with all the leadership there. Myself, Hamachi, some of our staff, depending on the matter. So we have talked about that. We do appreciate that comment, and we do, we do do that. We do coordinate. The, the, we all operate on different rules, though, and, and it's hard to get our rules to, to, to match up. So the state land portion of it, they have to sell their property to the, the best and highest use, and we can acquire right away. So that is a great <coughs> suggestion. We're gonna, gonna bring that back to state land. Thank you for that. And we will continue to work with these stakeholders. As I said, I, I'm in touch with our state representative from ADOT board. We will bring these this information back. It, it, all due respect, when Mr. House mentioned contacting your your representatives, I don't think he meant to to contact them to ask if they would do potholes. I think it was for other issues. What I'm suggesting is my staff and I and Kamachi, we do coordinate with data and we'll do that. My name is Lord Rising. I live at 10156 Sleepy Hollow. I've been there for the last 20 years. Hmm. There's a old saying that the three most important elements of the value of property are location, location, location. This meeting has caused my location to lose $100,000 in value. Why should we have to pay for the developer not recognizing that and paying too much and the county approving this plan with not because of the impact. You know, I, we went through this in October 15 years ago, and as I recall, the solution was a road coming out under the power lines. Sleepy Hollow can't handle this. No. You all know that. Yeah. Thank you. Road. Now I 
are some of my neighbors who don't like my driving at the speed limit. And in fact, I had to call for the help of the sheriff because I was a subject of road rage from a neighbor who did not like that I was driving 25 miles per hour in a 25 mile hour. Two weeks ago, I had a finger from a neighbor. Yes, so folks, listen to this. These are really heartfelt questions and they're serious questions because I too am concerned. There are some children, for example, with bicycle. And, and I look at my neighbors driving Sleepy Hollow at speeds way beyond 25 miles per hour. For shame on us who do not obey the traffic signs. Thank you for your very hard film. My desk faces the street, so I can watch the street almost of a day. And I see cars swerving inside a number all the time to avoid these walkers and these bicyclists and these dogs. And, and nobody has said, if this if Sleepy Hollow is now, if, if it becomes an access road. And I've heard this crap for years, and I'm 99.9% sure it's going to happen. What are the plans for Sleepy Hollow? What are the plans for the safety of on Sleepy Hollow. What are you going to do? Are you going to put in sidewalks? Are you going to put in curbs? Are you going to put in all of these safety features? For us, are you going to have people monitoring speed? And I don't mean some dummy car that they park down there and then in less than 24 hours everybody figures out it's a dummy and they just fly by the Anyway, are you going to have officers giving tickets? I can't remember all those questions right. What are you going to do? So I'm just going to answer a couple of those um, Chris, we talked about our sheriff and PCSO. Of course, that's the law enforcement. One of the things we can't control is people being not smart and doing silly things. Ironwood Road, we spent a million dollars on Ironwood Road last year to try to make it safer. We've had several fatalities. People are still updating their Facebook page going 80 miles an hour on Ironwood Road. So I'm, I don't know how to fix that, but I'm going to ask Lindsay, who's our engineer up in that area, to look at that and contact you that? to see what that dip you're talking about that doesn't it's, it's not just the dip it's the walkers it's the dogs understood it's the bicycle well, there's off an animal vehicles that fly down that road and it's it's the pedestrians what are you going to do to protect the pedestrians that's my question right that that is a law enforcement issue man I, we at the county it's a, it's a safety issue of where are we going to walk we have enough sidewalks where are we going to walk What's your planning? Yes, what's the plan? What's the plan? You have to walk in the street. Well, they don't know what to do. Look at that. Well, what we can do is when we look at things, we have, we have safety studies that we do, and then we try and go after safety dollars to support that allow us to build sidewalks, trails, and things of that nature. But until we have to, we have to identify those issues. And, and with all due respect, just by saying that you have an issue, we have to actually go out and we have to count people and we have to. Let me have and the that kind of thing. I will sit at my desk for 24 and, hours. And I believe, I believe that's what Mr. Have all the proof that you need. I believe that's what Mr. Anderson is saying about having Lindsay come and see what's going on and we can start to work on that process. We're actually in the, we just completed the traffic safety study for all of Pinal County and it's actually been studied four different times by four different agencies. And we did not see this as a problem in this particular neighborhood. But that's not to say that we won't continue to try to look at it. And that's what I think what Mr. Anderson is saying we're going to do. We will look at it. Thank you, man. Next question. My name is uh, Philip Flood, and I live on Sleepy Hollow. In fact, I live right next to the um, fire road. And we did our due diligence when we bought the lot on about 94. Uh, we checked, we landed behind the zone for no more than one house for an acre, and also the um, purpose of the fire. Um, we filled that down by the county. This meeting seems like a bit of a danger of you. At times, uh, myself and many of our neighbours protested the change of zoning. In fact, in, they also assured everybody there would be no street lighting. And I see in the phase one of the new development, there's a lot of street lights gone up. Um, yeah. What's going to happen to the washes? So the way they're being filled in there, you're going to have a drainage problem. Uh, I'm not going to say anything more about Sleepy Hollow. I think everybody here has said plenty, and uh, they're 100% right. I don't know how you can buy from the road anyway, 
if it's going to be meeting to be widened, I don't think it's quite ridiculous to access traffic down through Sleepy Hollow. And I hope, you know, the county isn't going to let us and people like us down again, yet again, even though you are a new crowd. Thank you. Hello, my name is Steve Nauer. I live uh, off Sleepy Hollow in Anastasia. I want to thank Roberto and all of you uh, showing up today and trying to answer some questions. Some not fair, some fair. So I just have a few clarification questions here. Final plat approval for both Peralta Trail Development and Peralta Canyon. Traffic analysis, if I read it right, shows when complete build out is done in 2021, I think the plan says. Peralta Trail would still have approximately 50% capacity with total build out to both phase one and phase two. I read it as 10,000 cars per day. Peralta Trail will handle 20,000 cars per day. Does that ring a bell to anybody? I'm going to leave to our traffic and press release. I apologize. Okay. Maybe, maybe not fair to spit numbers out. But my point is, the traffic analysis has been done. It shows there's plenty of capacity with the, in, with the existing road system, right? I'm assuming in preliminary plat of phase two, the emergency entrance, the gate with the knock box was approved as part of that. Is that right? Okay. So my question is, when I just boil all that together, so what has changed that now we have this question before us of we need a new direct access to Peralta Canyon from Sleepy Hollow? What, what's driving that? Because there's no past studies that demonstrate the need for that. You have a safety emergency exit as, as Supervisor House has stated we need to have that is in place. Speaker House also states that no one would even use this road if we did make a connection to Sleepy Hollow, which seems kind of redundant. But anyway, my question is broad based. What has changed? Why are we talking about this now? Because you had an accident across the trails in US 60. And there were no in, in access in or out of the trails for the better part of four and a half hours. Well, wouldn't that have come out in the preliminary planning and the traffic analysis and everything else that has been done? No. 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 Life gets in the way. Things do happen that are not expected on any traffic analysis or traffic study. Everybody knows that, that things happen, okay? So that's what's changed. What's changed is. If, if there is a serious accident at, at Peralta Trails and US 60, how are those people going to get out? Through, through your approved through your emergency access that's already approved with a gate on it. That's how you do it. That's why it was approved that way. Why are we talking about making it a connector road? Oh, well, who's going to get out to open the gate? Who's ever the emergency personnel is that has the lock to the lock box? Yeah, see, that's, that's how they work. Yeah, if no one can get in or out of, how does someone get up there to open up the gate? These are pretty typical. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, box I'm, box is I'm asking a simple, emergency access. I'm asking a simple question. Ask the fire no department, he would show up and unlock the gate. If he can get through. If he can what? If he can get through. If the traffic can't get through, we pump our trail. So if he can, if he maybe can come around and speak to that's where we can approve. Okay. Right. But not with a roadway, with an emergency access. Okay. There's a difference. Yeah, there is. There's a difference. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yep. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with the we'll see what happens with the future plan. We'll see what happens with the threat. This meeting is to gather information, and that's what we've gotten a lot of today. Okay. Thank you. A lot of
All right, they have a key. I, I know this is a rhetorical question. I know the answer, but I want you to say this. Well, the strobe lights of our emergency vehicles open open as well, and also we have knock spot keys, so we, we'll always get through them. Our trucks weigh a lot, so that's not an issue. Yeah. One thing I forgot to say the last time, you guys, we are lucky to live in the valley where we have unlimited supply of EMS and fire vehicles coming. So it's an auto lead system, so we're automatically when two units are busy, we're filling the maze that just keeps coming. So that part we don't have to worry about. The access, I understand. So that's not my job. <laughs> well, the reason why I want to do I want to say something. I don't think there's anyone in this whole room who would disagree that if you would put an emergency exit at the end of Sleepy Hollow, if it was locked, it wasn't for through traffic, because as my husband earlier stated, 68 houses dump off of their driveways onto Sleepy Hollow. There's five bus stops in the morning. Five in the afternoon. There's a horse crossing. There's all kinds of reasons. There's no curbs. There's no sidewalks. So, you know, we don't have a stop and go light at the end of King's Ranch Road or, or at Sleepy Hollow King's Ranch Road. So, I don't think there's anybody in this whole room that would disagree with me that if you would put up an emergency exit, therefore it could be used if there was an evacuation, a fire, a wildfire, or whatever it is. Keep it locked. But nobody can see to tell me if we're going to place that there, is it going to be locked right now? And that's the way it should be. And people, don't you worry? I don't know what you Why? I mean, the, the street itself, I mean, I'm an old school teacher. I'm not an engineer, but I can't imagine. 